Well, hello, folks. If you're looking for some specific information on how to get the attention deficit disorder medications correct, you've come to the right place. I just wrote a book on ADHD medication rules, paying attention to the meds for paying attention. So please go ahead and get that book and look at it because it's going to be, it's going to actually stimulate the conversation and I think it's going to be a game changer. But one of the things I raise in that book, which is not commonly appreciated, is, and I, in fact, I just heard this the other day on a national televised, not televised, but teleconference uh, in which a, an authority in the United States said, as we all know, ADHD is a 24-7 diagnosis. My friends, I'm here to tell you that is absolutely, you heard it first here, absolutely incorrect. It's incorrect. The prefrontal cortex is trying to handle reality. That's assuming that the reality is systematically the same all the time, and it's projecting the idea that ADHD is kind of like when you're hyperactive and you're a kid and you're five years old and you're cranked all the time. That is not the characteristic presentation of ADHD. And in fact, most kids, when they get to be eight or nine years old, it only shows sometimes in certain contexts. It doesn't show all the time. And that's why everybody's so confused. Is it ADHD? Is it not ADHD? Very frequently, it is ADHD, but it shows in a specific context. What is the context that ADHD you know, flourishes? Increased variables, decreased structure, absent of focus. Increased variables, decreased structure, absent of focus. I probably say this in my office every day, maybe 15, 20 times a day. So if it looks like it's rehearsed, it's because it's just plain old, it comes out of me automatically. Now, why do I say it all the time? Because so many come in and say, I can't figure out whether I've got ADD or not. In this place, I do terribly. In this other context, I do very well. And very frequently, when you look at the context that they do well, the variables are decreased, the structure is increased, and the focus is there because that person likes what they're doing, is attracted to the information that they're processing, and playing the video game or whatever. You know, they like it. So and this, this is true for adults as well. In fact, one of the cases that I write about in the book is an individual who has two PhDs in a very high degree of mathematical science, which I won't say here. And the bottom line is he can't complete a sentence. He teaches with double PhDs and a master's degree in computer technology. He teaches myriads of college students all over. But can he talk and have a conversation? No, he can't unless the structure is purely scientific with known variables, a clear structure, a diminished amount of variables, and a clear focus. Without a focus, he is actually uh, he's suffering from an advanced degree of mental constipation. He's got too much on his mind. And this is a problem where if you're actually smart, it's far worse than if you were stupid. Actually being smart makes this whole thing much worse because it's a cognitive abundance. It's not a cognitive deficiency. So many people are out there uh, suffering with a cognitive abundance and are then denigrated and actually run down for what, they, what others say is a cognitive deficiency. Well, it's an operational cognitive deficiency, but the problem is they've got way too much on their mind. I talk about this in a great deal in another video here called Anxiety and ADHD. Perhaps you've seen it. It's been out there for about a year now. So uh, this is the second video. It's really relating to the book. Context is important. It has something to do with changing reality. If we don't appreciate the reality that we're actually identifying as problematic, how can we target and fix it? Let me think about this. So I hope that helps. Look forward to talking to you soon. Have a good one.